Uh, good morning, I'm Scott McLeod from Nespers, Idaho, and uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to be part of this conference, and uh, I uh, am happy to be able to be here to uh, listen and learn and try to get some ideas about growing uh, canola and marketing it. Uh, my youngest daughter is a cougar. She wanted to go to Washington State, spent six years there, got her doctorate in pharmacy, and it cost me about the price of a combine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Nespers is where uh, Hilco is located, makes the levelers for the combines. Very small town, about 400 people. Uh, on, on the program, it lists me as high rainfall, and what that means is it's usually too damn wet to work. <laughs> and uh, uh, in the early 90s, we were looking for something to grow mostly because of prices. Uh, lentils were about a dime, green peas, seven, eight cents, barley, I think it was less than $70 a ton. Mm -hmm. The only thing we could make money on was a good crop of wheat. You know, a 40, uh, a 40 bushel crop of wheat uh, would, uh, we didn't make money on that either. And uh, Intermountain came out with this canola deal, and I don't remember exactly, but this is pretty close. They offered us $120 an acre and uh, six cents a pound, and I think it was over a thousand pounds. And, and we didn't know if we could make any money, but we figured we wouldn't lose any money. And so we gave it a shot, we put in 300 acres, and it worked out okay. And uh, there, uh, I think that first crop uh, made about 16 or 1700 pounds. And uh, uh, we didn't get rich, but, but it was better than other things that we could do. Uh, where I farm, as I've said before, it's, it's wet, but it, it's along the canyons above the Clearwater River. And, and we have a lot of rocks, and our soil pro profiles are different. There's a lot of thin ground, and there's a lot of wet ground. And, and we can actually uh, do better with canola on that ground than the pulse crops, because we don't have to fight the rocks so much. And, and canola is kind of a forgiving crop in that it can handle some uh, thin ground and uh, still make a crop and it, and it does okay in wet ground and uh, will still grow something will be there and uh, that thin ground is wet ground early in the year it's it, it doesn't have much of a profile so there's so it's too wet and then it dries out real fast uh, but then we quickly uh, found some other benefits to raising canola uh, our our uh, wheat had we'd been having disease problems, and uh, I don't know why, and maybe it's just, and I just know about our farm, but after canola, our, our uh, wheat is uh, pretty disease free, and, and it's pretty good for uh, for a few years. And we grew canola through through all our acres. Uh, the the taproot, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what it does for the profile. But, uh, and that could be some of the disease deal too, but that taproot really, really helps, I think. And uh, uh, our soil is uh, low in pH, and it was low when I started farming in 1975. It was like a 5.7. Some of it's down to 5.3 now. And canola doesn't really care about pH. It, uh, it does okay in that. And, uh, but I've said this about thin ground and wet ground and everything, but canola is like everything else. It likes good ground. And so the better it is, the, the better the canola will do. Uh, the other thing, it's the only uh, uh, Roundup ready crop that, that's really available to us to use, which, you know, there's the obvious thing. You can plant uh, Roundup ready canola in a mess and go out and spray the weeds out and kind of clean your ground up while you're growing a crop. But the other thing is, is a lot of times we have such a small window of opportunity to plant our crops. We, uh, we might just have a few days in April. It can get pretty late. We grow winter canola when it's too wet in the spring and we end up with a bunch of summer fall and we'll put some winter canola in or, or dwarf F Essex rape when we didn't have a chance to get the spring crops in. 
And so, so uh, we can go out with this Roundup Ready canola and not do anything, just take the, the direct seed outfit out and plant right into it and then we can spray it when we have a chance. And it, it uh, really is helpful to know that uh, we can do that. And that'll probably be the first thing we do this spring, we'll go out before we do any other preparation and seed some canola. Uh, now I'm gonna get into kind of some things. I thought that uh, I've heard kind of a lot of the same problems and concerns that we've had. And I just wanted to talk about a couple other things I thought you might like. I like to grow canola because it's pretty. <laughs> and uh, you go out and plant it and the foliage is pretty. It comes up, I've had people stop and ask me, what is, is that a field of broccoli? And I'm thinking, what am I going to do with 300 acres of broccoli? But, <laughs> but and, and of course, the blooms uh, just beautiful, that yellow, and, and it's good for farming. People uh, stop and look at that, and they talk about it, and, and it makes them feel better about uh, uh, farmers. Uh, it, it, when, when I'm around someplace, there's uh, to, and they ask you what you do, like if you're out of the area and somebody uh, says, what are you doing, I'm a farmer, what do you grow? And I always say wheat, because that's the main thing we grow, but not much interest. Everybody, my well, wheat, you know, bread, big deal. But when you say canola, and they all want to know, how, well, how do you harvest it? With a combine, just like wheat, well, it's oil. And so you have to go back and tell them, uh, you know, the oil, and canola is good for you. You know, it's got a good uh, vibe in that it's supposed to be the healthy oil. Uh, and, and so I think it's uh, really, really good for the farming industry. Uh, the other thing I like about uh, canola, it's real forgiving in some ways. So if something goes wrong and you have a, a thin uh, stand of canola and it will branch out and get big like a Christmas tree and put on more pods and branches and get thicker and, and it'll, do, it'll do better when you've when you've had kind of a something go wrong, and uh, and so like being a farmer, you know, I check most of my fields driving by at 50 miles an hour in a pickup, and I look at that and I dread thinking about going in and cutting that canola. And uh, the canola always cuts better than it looks if you have a poor crop. Conversely, you can have a beautiful crop of canola, and I never I figured this out that you think is going to make, you know, I'm going to have a new bin buster this year, and, and a, a, a good crop never cuts as well as, as what I, I think it will. Uh, the other thing about canola in our area, we, we have some hail events, and uh, it, it's tough, and it will try to come back after it's been beat up and, and produce some crop. And uh, most other crops uh, don't, especially pulse crops, uh, just can't uh, handle that. The other thing is I like to harvest canola. The, uh, it, it sounds like you're in a thunderstorm. You're on that combine, there's so much stuff coming in. It's just chewing things up and it's just kind of fun to be out there. Uh, it's not uh, that dirty or dusty and uh, it doesn't itch. <laughs> and and, and I, I even like the way, when, I don't like it when it's rotten, the smell in. But uh, during harvest, I even like the smell of canola. I like the way it looks in the trucks. It's kind of fun to have something that you, you, you know, you fill up your grain tank and it's black, or you look in the truck and it's black, and people even wonder what you're hauling. And uh, I like that. But the best thing I like about canola harvest is uh, things kind of slow down. You don't have all those trucks running, you know, and uh, you don't need all the guys. And so and it's kind of fun because there's always been that guy that kind of was annoying. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, said to my wife when I was talking about this speech, and I, I said, she said, I, I would use annoying, but I wanted to say the guy that makes my butt itch. All <laughs> harvest. And uh, anyway, uh, it's, it's really nice when you get to, to canola harvest, you can give him the day off <laughs> out there. Or if you have a good crew and everything's going really well, I'll have book work to do. You know, not really. I can go golfing or something else like that. And the other thing is you don't uh, have to worry about fire. I, I'm a bit, I, I guess I've had too many grain field fires and I'm always on my toes about that, but it's just, it just seems more uh, 
relaxing. Yeah, canola is kind of a relaxing crop. I, I just, I, I like it. Uh, these guys that have been here before me, they kind of talk about some of the wrecks and things, and we have had our share of wrecks and bad things happen with canola, which I can tell you about, but they asked me to talk about why I grow canola, so I, so I won't. And uh, I'm looking forward to the conference. Uh, I, I, I thought I was the lone Idaho guy when I got up here, but then I spotted some guys around the audience after I got up here, so I'm not uh, on my own over here. So thank you very much.